What's going on everybody and welcome to another episode of Jersey Digs. Chris the Silver Snipper here. This time around, no more beaches. I'm in the middle of a field and if you folks have watched my video for some time, you have heard me complain and complain and complain that these fields have been full of corn stalks for the last eight months. Uh, this is a 1700s farm that I detect that I got permission for and I've detected pretty much everything over to my right here and everything over to the left and I've certainly been rewarded with a lot of goodies. Enough stuff for me to keep wanting to detect these fields. So I'm back. I'm a little ill prepared. I was just passing by the property on my way home and uh, I have my simplex on me as always. I have two bars of battery left so I'm going to make a go at it but I think this is going to be where I'll be detecting this week. So I hope you enjoy the watch. If you do, as always, please consider liking and subscribing and I'll see you all on the first dig. All right, first signal amongst the corn. When I'm in the, on it in the right light, it's a 30 on the simplex. So that could be a nickel, maybe. Uh, the corn is still up and it is making me lose some depth with this SP24. So I am gonna have to return with the Legend with the LG30 get as much depth as I can. The good thing about this field is majority of the finds have really not been deep, you know, outside of one mercury dime and one Connecticut state copper we found. Everything was about three inches or so. But again, I have no chest mount today, so I'm gonna get this out and I'll show you what it is. All right, so first find of the day is a rock. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's a rock. Um, I'm gonna keep trying this if it's not too good. I'm gonna try that little tree area over there because I did I, on historic aerials, when I kept looking over this, I saw some type of structure there. So I'm going to try that in a little bit. Next dig. All right. No, it looks like I probably planted it, but I just kicked the corn out of the way. Kicked the corn right off the cob. That's a nice signal. Nice and deep. 70s, 80s. Open it up. All right. Moment of truth. I have that thing. And I figure let's reveal it together. I don't know what this is going to be. Um, hmm. not a button, not a cufflink. Thinking some type of hardware for like old furniture, but it has some nice weight to it. I would say definitely of an older period. Not a clue, but we have this thing. Proud to have it. Next dig. Deep 40s tone? Sure, why not? All right. She's out at a 47. Oh, almost fell in my own hole. Let's reveal what we got together. No way. Did I just do this? I just got a flying eagle, everybody. This is a bucket lister for the silver sniffer. This is my first. I'm gonna clean it up and I'll be right back. Awesome. And the corn does it, everyone. I am so glad I came here today. So yeah, we have a flying eagle. It's going to be one of three years, 18, I believe 56 through 58, they were minted, but I have no date for this one. Not until I get home and clean it up further, but it's drying out nicely. Bucket Lister, crossed off. So glad I stopped today. I have been off the old coins for quite a bit now, so I'm really happy to get one of these out of the ground. Uh, this is the first one of this field. Man. I am ecstatic. I have nothing to say. <laughs> I, I, you know, a little bummed it's not silver, but I, man, the back needs some cleaning. It's going to need some work, but okay. Bucket lister in the pocket. Next dig. All right. I got another one right next to the flying eagle. And the SP24 is doing just a dandy job at getting this stuff out. Not that deep. Two bars, 68. Let's see. Time for a reveal. Oh. We got a musket ball, a big fella, nice heft to it. This field, I'm telling you, you know, I like the jewelry hunts and all that stuff, but relic hunting and finding old coins is my bread and butter. Okay, I'm gonna keep moving, next dig. So I picked an awful day to wear shorts. The bugs are murdering me. I have that signal. Um, I, I went around the corn as much as I can. I kind of do wish I had my LG30 with me just for the sake of more ground coverage. But I have a 60s tone in the right light, some 70s, I'll get that out. And yet again, another reason why I want my legend. Another hot rock, next dig. Okay, so with having two bars left on my simplex and me more so just being curious today what's hiding in this corn, I'm gonna go walk to the far end of this field where the corn's been up. 
and an area that I've been interested in for some time. It's where the original house stood, and that house was built in the 1790s, as far as I'm aware from the homeowner. The corn seems down. <laughs> now, I, thought I'd, I never thought I'd be so excited about having corn not be in a field. So I'm going to walk over here and just pick out a few signals, and then this will continue on another day. Next day. So update, the dreaded corn stalks are still up, mocking me. Um, this ain't gonna work, even with the SP24. I, I'm just losing too much depth, and I can't get enough coverage to get on a signal. I found a wire and a shotgun shell. So I'm gonna go back this way. Next dig. All right, everybody, here with what will likely be my last signal of the day. Nice 72. You know, what you folks have seen is pretty much the result of two hours of metal detecting so it's tough hunting the the grass is too tall the corn is still mocking me but i have a 72 let's see if we can finish it on a coin just like that staring back at me i have what looks to be a button uh, a better days button we'll call it i wonder if that's going to be silver plated just by the way it rang up um, but no backside to this, just a button. Like I said, I, I got probably about 15, 20 minutes left of detecting. No credible markings on there either for everyone to not see. But, um, I, you know, it's mostly going to be on the walk back, which the walk back I've essentially covered 10 times over. But anyway, this will likely be the last dig, if not next dig. All right, everybody, round two, fight. It's a little hot today, very sunny. My blue eyes are incapable of handling it, so I'm wearing shades. Sporting the legend today, I got my LG30 coil. Unfortunately, I forgot my chest mount yet again at home. It's, it's hot out here, so I'm gonna see how long I can go. I'm guessing probably about an hour, and the reason I'm here this week, I'm under the impression that the owner of this farm is going to be planting. I rarely speak to this man. I've been detecting this place for probably a year now, and I think I've only seen him twice. So he's on a completely different schedule than me, but luckily he welcomed me to come at any point in time. I'm going to get right over to where I found the Flying Eagle scent and start picking around over there. I'm hoping with the LG30 coil I can kind of swing above the corn and the grooves in the ground from them leveling it and get a little more depth. Check out the hawk flying off into the distance, but um, that's about it. I'll see you on the next dig. Get out of here, Bumblebee. All right. Got a signal. 35, 36. It is brutally hot out here. I've been out here for all of eight minutes, and I'm cooking. <laughs> but I have that. I'm going to open it up. Sorry, no chest mount, but uh, it's just sitting on my table because I happen to forget it. Open this up. All right, first find of this steamy May afternoon is one bullet. I think that's going to go to show that I'm getting some coverage. I walked the same line yesterday with the, um, the SP24. Still not where the Flying Eagle was. Um, if anyone's interested, I'm running field mode. Um, that's really about it. I really haven't done much. M1, all metal. Um, no threshold, no anything like that. I had to lower my sensitivity today to get stability. But um, that's pretty much what I'm doing. Next dig. All right, so things have been slow. I've been digging out mostly iron and uh bullet fragments but i just dug a 20 stone and i'll show you it before i take it out of its its a uh, hole looks like i have a coin what will it be it's a jeff will it be a silver jeff it is it is pretty shiny considering that it's been sitting in the ground i think we have a silver jeff here hmm. yeah we definitely have a silver jeff all right, I'm going to clean this off. Awesome. So that was three inches deep, and uh, mostly the 25s are just bullets, <laughs> so I don't show them. But uh, let me uh, let me clean this off. So as far as coins go for this field, this is pretty modern. Most of the stuff that has come out has been 1800s, but we have a 1943 Jefferson Nickel Silver, 35% silver. Ecstatic to have it. I uh, This was the last thing I expected coming out of that hole. It was ringing like a 22 to a 27 but okay, we got a video, everyone. <laughs> Next dig. So I think I realized why that nickel was ringing a little low. So that's my hole right there, right under my coil. And right next to it, I have a ferrous tone and a 19, but I'll take it out. And right next to it, 
I have my arch nemesis of this field, a small bullet. Keep going, next dig. So I keep seeing shadows go above me, and if you folks look, I have hawks <laughs> circling me, probably thinking that I'm dying, which I am, I am. Um, but update, uh, I've, I've walked a little bit, and uh, nothing too significant to show you folks outside of that nickel. But um, it's such a shame the corn stalks are still high enough to the point where I am losing a significant amount of depth. You can see them better that way. But um, there's little lanes that I'm finding that looks like it just went down just low enough for me to swing. So I'm not gritting it perfectly, but I bet you if I was, I'd be pulling out more. Uh, that's the update for now. Next dig. So I turned around and started making my way to the bottom of the farm. And I have a 45, 46. All right, so it looks like I have myself a coin. Let's see what we got. Will it be an Indian? No, it's going to be a Weedy McWeederson. 1944? We're going to call that a 44. Okay. I'm going to have to stay around this area, I think. Next dig. All right, everyone. So I'm making it back to my car. Still going through the corn here, but as you can see, I'm probably losing probably five, six inches on average when I'm swinging over this. So I know I'm missing targets. Granted, everything in this field is relatively shallow, but you know, there are those few deep exceptions that are typically keepers. Like I've noticed the buttons in this field are usually a dig, you know, usually six to as deep as about 13 inches. I've found them before. And uh, pull tab found the Connecticut state copper a while back in our earlier videos that uh that was really deep that was probably like 14 15 inches deep so i i don't think this is worth it plus i'm questioning you know the moment i catch this coil uh the wire on one of these stalks i i worry that i'm gonna rip it and damage it and be in a whole world of pain when it comes to my metal detecting adventures so i'm gonna come out of this there's a few areas of interest for me I'm not sure how productive they would be but yeah, I'm going to have to cut this video short. So if there's a next dig, next dig. If not, I'll see you all at the wrap up. All right, round three. Did I say wrap up? I don't tap out after two rounds. Anyway, it's uh, Thursday and we have overcast, which is my favorite type of detecting weather. And I'm going to beeline it right back to the corn. Um, I know it was uh, gruesome and a uh, long haul, certainly. Only a few finds to be noted in about three hours of hunting. But I'm going to change the settings up a little bit today. I'm going to see if I can lower my recovery, swing a little slower, maybe turn the threshold up to hopefully just gain a little more depth, you know, as I swing above the corn stalks. So anyway, see you on the next dig. All right, so after walking around for 45 minutes... They sound better for the camera. Anyway, I have a 31. 32. Sounds pretty good. A lot better than any other signal I had today. So let's get that out. Struggling to find it with no chest mount on. It sounded good. Oh, it. We have another musket ball, which I'll take, certainly. Nice piece. I think that's a musket ball. Hopefully. <laughs> but I'll take that. Um, I got a few more minutes. I'm kind of, I guess about a half hour away from being done here. You know, I had to come back for a third round, but I think that I've learned after three times of doing this that the corn's simply just too high. But anyway, next dig. Well, here is a juicy tone. If I ever heard one in this field. Really deep. Not getting any depth indication on it. But that is a nice, repeatable 40s tone. This may be the last one of the day, so detecting gods, bless me. All right, so I think I see an edge of a coin down there. Pretty deep. And if this is deep, this could be something special. Like I said, most of the stuff is hiding on the surface, but it seems pretty big. It's definitely a coin. Do I have a two cent piece here? Guys, did I just get another bucket lister? No way. I did. I got a freaking two cent piece. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. Look at this thing. <laughs> oh man. Okay, 
I'm pumped. I gotta clean this up. Just when all hope is lost, you come across this gem. The swinging low and slow, everyone. Heed warning, keep the coil to the ground and swing slow, but this is an 1865 two cent piece. Beautiful condition. This is a first for me, and this, this field has just been home to bucket listers. I thought after today I was gonna retire this field, but you just can't. You can't when stuff like this keeps coming out. I have, you know, revitalized hope that these next few lines I do are gonna produce something, but I'm doubtful. It's been slow going, but worth it for this. Um, another 20 minutes I'll add to the timer. Next dig. Figure I show you before I get out of here. So I've probably covered in today's video maybe 3% of this corn area. All that's too high. That's sitting at about eight, nine inches high. I have to find this stuff on the ground here that's like leveled and be careful when I'm swinging because again, I voiced earlier in this video, I was a bit concerned about jacking the wire on my coil up. But um, so that's what I'm working with. And in, in just the area that I can cover, you know, pulling those those coins out are, uh, is, it's impressive. You know, I, I wish I had the ability to get more closer to the ground and cover it better. But for what I got, I will take it. Anyway, that's all. Um, no uh, next dig. I will see you all at the wrap up. Okay, everybody, welcome to the wrap up. If you made it this far, I thank you so much for watching. And if you could, please consider throwing a like on this. Just helps me uh, get my video thrown out deeper into the YouTube world. So all in all, in front of you, you're looking at the results of about four hours of brutal metal detecting, I'll call it. I couldn't get depth, I couldn't get coverage, but all in all, I still managed to record some really awesome um, finds here. Uh, I am throwing myself down an adult beverage here. I'll just take that off the screen and take a little swiggy. But anyways, let's get right into it. So all in all, these are the cream of the crop of finds that I have found. All that's missing from here is a few modern bullets and a handful of shotgun shells, as well as aluminum slaw. Starting off with the weirdest thing, my not a clue piece. I have no idea. Um, you know, I thought maybe a piece of horseshoe, but I'm, I don't think so. Um, doesn't fit the bill. Uh, we also have this piece, and it's really bugging me. I have no idea what it is, but it looks like maybe something would, you know, clip onto there. Maybe some type of rope. Or it's just an old dresser piece, because it looks like there may have been, like, a screw of some sort down here. But it beats me. If you could help identify it, please can uh, comment below. We have some round balls. So this one, musket ball, smaller one as well. And this one, which is possibly a bullet, still might just be a pole to a dresser. I can't exactly ID it. Um, the the backside is what's confusing me. There's no backside to refer to. So maybe a button as I throw it off screen, maybe a button. Uh, we did find some 1900s coins. So I have a 1945 Weedy here. And my surprise of the day is this Jefferson nickel. Didn't expect it, wasn't planning on finding this today, but it is the one piece of silver I managed to pull out of this field. Um, 1943 Philadelphia Mint Mark, happy to have it. I say it all the time, I, you don't come across these all that often, so like when you do, it's like, you know, it's a keeper. And now on to my top finds of the day. So we'll start with the Flying Eagle. Now I've turned this thing every which way, and I cannot get a date off of it to save my life. In certain light, I think I see 1858, but I, I'm i going to leave it as unidentifiable. Um, really be cool to have it be in 1856, um, because they weren't supposed to be minted that year. Um, so it makes them extremely rare and highly valuable, but I guess we'll never know. And then for this piece, um, this is a first for me. Well, the, the Flying Eagle is a first for me too, but um, this is a first as well Is this two-cent piece from 1865. Now, you know, I wouldn't say incredibly rare, but definitely rare. And look at the condition it's in. It has beautiful patina. All the all the United States of America is coming out beautifully on it. And also, fun fact, it is the first coin in the United States to have the slogan, In God We Trust, on it. So definitely a keeper. Bucket lister finds. Two bucket lister finds. A little silver. And, of course, a Weedy McWeederson. All in all... Not a bad hunt, you know, I really wish I managed to get some more ground coverage and some more depth there because I am highly confident that I am missing some signals. Something that was interesting about finding this piece is it was directly in line with this piece as well as a few shotgun shells. So I'm I'm pretty curious if, 
something was going on on the property and the person running around with a shotgun was dropping coins along the way. Be really interesting to see what else is hiding out there, but it's going to have to wait until next time. Did manage to catch up with the farmer and it seems as though he's planning on planting um, and seeding this weekend. So I'm happy I managed to get out and recover a few more awesome pieces from this field. Again, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all on the next dig.